Well, hello there, students. Here's Mr. Mechnick with a podcast on DNA replication for today. So the main goal of this podcast is just so you can see and understand the complexity of the mechanisms that are used in replicating DNA. Replicating DNA simply means to make a copy of itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is show a quick little video tutorial that kind of walks us through an animation of how DNA is replicated. During the video, I would like you to play, pay close attention to the functions of each of the following components of replication. So make a list of these in your notes, and as the video plays, please try and identify what the purpose of each one of these either structures or enzymes are as they aid in replication. DNA replication will begin at a specific area of the molecule called the origin of replication. The origin of replication denotes the area of active replication called the replication fork. In order to understand how complex eukaryotic organisms replicate DNA, scientists first studied replication in prokaryotic models like E. coli. A number of enzymes are needed for replication to proceed once the replication fork is established. Helicase separates the strands of the double helix, and single-stranded binding proteins stabilize the newly single-stranded regions. DNA gyrase is used to make sure the double-stranded areas outside of the replication fork do not supercoil. Once the replication fork is stable, DNA polymerase catalyzes the addition of new nucleotides to the growing daughter strand. Other proteins, such as beta clamps and the clamp loader, help hold the DNA polymerase in place on the DNA. Short sequences of RNA, called primers, have to be paired to the template strands by the enzyme primase because DNA polymerase cannot begin to add nucleotides without a primer. Replication of both strands occurs at the same time, one using continuous synthesis and the other discontinuous. Continuous synthesis occurs on the 3' prime to 5' prime oriented parent strand, referred to as the leading strand. New nucleotides are added to the 3' prime end, moving continuously toward the expanding replication fork. Discontinuous synthesis occurs on the parent strand that is oriented 5' prime to 3', prime, called the lagging strand, and is completed in segments called Okazaki fragments. Replication on this strand uses primase to add primers ahead of the 5' prime end of the lagging strand. DNA polymerase 3 then adds short sequences of nucleotides, the Okazaki fragments, to the primer, filling in the gap. As the helix is opened further, this process repeats until the entire strand is replicated. DNA polymerase 1 replaces the RNA primers with DNA nucleotides, and DNA ligase is used to ensure bonding between the fragments and the replaced nucleotides. Once both the leading and lagging strands have completed their replication, two identical copies of the DNA molecule result. The process of DNA replication allows actively dividing bacterial cells to make sure all daughter cells have the same genetic instructions as the parent cell, allowing them to function in the same manner. Thus, bacterial populations can grow, increasing the number of individuals in a colony. Well, there you have it. There was the animated version of how DNA replicates. Here's a, a snapshot of, the anima of that animation showing you a breakdown of all those important components. So I'm going to start just with a quick review. So helicase is a specific enzyme that unzips the double helix. So this area right here where the helicase is unzipping that parent strand is called the replication fork. Just remember, this is happening in this direction and there's another replication fork where DNA is replicating in another direction. 
So initially, these single-stranded binding proteins, or SSBs, are laid down, so the DNA can't re-anneal or re reconnect back together again. Then, the major enzyme, DNA polymerase, is working in two locations. It's working on the parent strand, which, is, which in this case is the leading strand, and it's working and building continuously in a 5 to a 3 prime orientation. So that's the direction in which DNA polymerase is working. So we can say that polymerase works continuously on the leading strand. However, the opposite strand, which is called the lagging strand, has a 3 prime end here and a 5 prime end here. So now what we see is that the DNA polymerase enzyme is going to have to work in small short fragments. So the way this happens is, first thing, the enzyme primase must lay down an RNA primer. The primer is the location for DNA polymerase to begin. So what will happen is polymerase will identify this RNA primer and start building in a 5 to 3 prime orientation on the lagging strand. However, it will end up stopping when it reaches the next primer. So what ends up what you end up happening is you have a gap between the two strands that were just built discontinuously. So as it does this, it builds these individual fragments of DNA, which are named after the scientist that discovered it. His last name is Okazaki. So we call these Okazaki fragments. These Okazaki fragments must be spliced together by another enzyme. And the enzymes that will join these Okazaki fragments together are called DNA ligase. So they will connect or splice these fragments together to create a replicated strand of the lagging side. So when it's all said and done, you will have a complete copy of the DNA. Pretty cool, isn't it? So one of the things that I will expect is that you can look at a lot of different diagrams and models and be, be able to interpret them. So here's an example that we will look at in class in the future that will be a nice summative way to understand what's happening. So are you able to identify all of the different components in this example? And to finish up, here's another example that you might come across in the future to kind of show how DNA is replicated. So again, it looks fairly complex initially, but once you start breaking it down, you should be able to identify all of the individual components of DNA replication. Thanks for listening, and bring these notes to class tomorrow, and we'll use them uh, to complete a couple empty models.